Today I wanted something simple and used in almost every campaign, a dungeon entrance. Hi everyone, this is Josh with Scattercraft. Many campaigns' first dungeons are an abandoned mine or a cave. Even the 5e starter campaign is the lost mine of Fandelver. Needless to say, every DM needs a mine entrance. So let's go make one. Okay, so I start out with this 2 inch blue foam. I kind of just guessed a thickness about how wide I wanted the mine to be. And I made a second piece for the top as well. Maybe the two inches is going to be a little too low. And I want a room to be able to carve this out. I cut this in half so I can create my mine shaft. I get about two, two and a half inches would be about right. Start a basic shape here. I know I kind of wanted to inset into the mountain a bit. Looks about right. I just grabbed some scrap foam core pieces. I found one that fit about right for the bottom. I also had some leftover 10 millimeter foam pieces here that I usually use for bricks or wood. I gave them a wood texture to use them as supports for the tunnel. Create a little inset for the support here and I rounded the corners with the tip of the hot glue gun. Also add a stone texture a little ways around as well. Just so I wouldn't have to deal with getting the hot glue gun next to the wood pieces in the future. And then I glued in the first two supports. I use the hot tip of the glue gun as well to give some texture to the inside of the tunnel. I really like this technique for a really easy way to give a nice stone texture. Then I just cut out some insets for the inside supports. Just pulled out the extra foam with my needle nose pliers. Just set those in there nicely. I took the piece I cut for the bottom and I gave that a texture as well. You can see how real fast and easy this is. I also rounded the corners a bit on the wood to give it more of a hand-hewn look. And then I glued in the bottom. After that I flush cut all the supports. And added a stone texture for a piece for the back as well. Glued that in, and it's starting to look like a mine shaft now. I used some Eileen's tacky glue, and laid out where I wanted all the rocks to be inside the tunnel, and brushed that around with a nylon throwaway paintbrush. And with my tweezers, I just started carefully setting all the stones exactly where I wanted them. I kind of like to bunch them up into piles and put them around the wood supports. After that was all set, I used the sand to fill in as smaller stones. While the glue was drying, I gave a little bit more shape to the outside. I didn't really have a plan when I was doing this, I was just carving until it looked right.
You really can't go too wrong with this. And up until this point, I'd left the top piece off because I knew that it'd be easier to work on the mine shaft without it on. I used the top piece to figure out where my cross support was going to be. I scored the uprights and cut out a space for the top support to sit. You notice I have kind of a poor cut here, but that'll get covered up with mod podge later, so I'm not worried about it. I also created a piece for the top. Originally I was going to use the blue foam, but it seemed to sit a little bit further away than I wanted, so this seemed to be a better solution. I just cut out a little spot for it to sit and glued it onto the top piece. I use a glue gun tip to give all of this a stone texture as well. And you can really go nuts with this, just try not to have it shaped like a glue gun tip, but besides that, you can just go at it and carve it and shape it until it looks right. I decided it'd be easier to Mod Podge the inside before putting the top on as well, so I did that first. And now that's looking pretty cool. So I used school glue to glue the top on and put a bunch of books on the top. But this really didn't end up working out very well. Uh, several hours later, the glue was still wet because of the insulative properties, I'm guessing, of the foam. So I just uh, ended up wiping all that off later and just used hot glue. And once that hot glue was dry, I just started carving everything into one shape. I use a technique of using the knife to break the foam to give some nice ridges. The only thing I don't like about this technique is it leaves one nicely textured side, but the other side is straight from your blade. So a good solution to this is to use that hot glue gun on that smooth side to give it a rough texture as well. And here's a close-up of what that looks like. So I used joint compound to fill this seam all the way around. It took a while just to kind of texture and mess with it and get it to look right. And there are still places you can definitely notice, but overall I think it turned out pretty good and hid, hid the line pretty well. Here, while that joint compound dried, I'd make a door for this thing. Also took some thinner pieces of foam that I textured as wood. Gave them a rough broken edge on each side to look like somebody just haphazardly broke some boards and put them on there. I just looked at it, saw where it would fit nice, and just glued it on. I wanted it to look like the miners were in a hurry to get out of there and just threw some boards up to block off the mine. I used a small nail to poke some little tiny nail holes in this. It's a really easy thing to give it some nice detail. And at this point, everything was ready to Mod Podge. That's starting to look pretty good. So I cut a hole in the bottom to fit one of these little flickering LED tea lights. I wanted the option to turn it on and off to make it look like somebody might be in the mine. It looks pretty cool in the dark. So I just used a burn umber brown to paint the top where I wanted to put all my flocking. This way, if any of the flocking comes loose, you'll have brown underneath instead of black. And it actually looks like it's supposed to be there. I also used the burn umber to block out all the wood pieces as well. And I used a pewter gray to base out all the stone. I used my go-to light mocha for the first dry brushing. I used that to dry brush the stone and the wood. Once that dries, I go over the stone one more time with an antique white dry brush. 
And after that thoroughly dries, I go over that with a homemade black wash. And for the top, I just use some PVA glue and spread it all over. That way I can apply the flocking. I also put it in all the little cracks and ridges where some grass might grow. I also use these little static grass tufts. These have gone a long way for me. I use them on a lot of projects and I still have quite a few left. They're great, self-adhesive, and they really make the flocking look much better. And now for the final reveal. Okay, so that was a fun and easy build. I like that this piece has some modularity. I like having the option of the boarded up door or just the open mine entrance. I also can make different doors in the future if I need something special for a campaign. The flickering LED is kind of nice to give it that not so abandoned feel when the need arises, as well as to create some apprehension in your players when they see it. Now, as I was building this, I could have left this unflocked. I know I did limit myself a bit by putting the green grass texture on it, if I hadn't, I could have put this in a desert setting or just underground or something like that. To be honest though, I was just feeling like adding flocking. I know most of the time I'm gonna use this is gonna be in a mountainous area or a forest setting anyways. To be honest though, I think this turned out really great and I think it's gonna create some really fun ambush encounters for my players. And if you haven't already and you did like this video, please share this video with your friends. It really helps this channel grow. This channel's been growing really fast and I really appreciate your shares. Also, please like and subscribe and thanks so much for watching Scattercraft. Bye.